for a long time now I've been wanting to introduce the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado 120 that we drove on three different continents already because this introduction of our vehicle is long overdue we've done many many big trips with this vehicle and I just wanted to show you what we've done in order to be able to travel around the world or at least on three continents so far with this truck I am Ferenc follow us on our adventures as we share our overland trips from all around the world When I purchased it in 2016 it was a totally stock vehicle and if you don't know the model this is basically the baby version of the Toyota Land Cruiser it's not the hardcore Toyota Land Cruiser in many parts of the world it's, it's called the Prado in the US or in North America and many other parts of the world as well it is actually the Lexus GX 470 with a few differences of course but in effect it's the same vehicle here in Europe, most of these uh, Prados are actually equipped with a 3-litre diesel engine and my particular car has got an automatic transmission and it's a 5-speed automatic paired with this 3-litre diesel and it's about 180 horsepower, 175 maybe and it's, it's more than adequate. I mean, what we were looking for when I bought it in 2016 from the first owner it was a, as I mentioned it was a totally stock car completely stock car with no modifications whatsoever it only had one owner and it had about 230,000 kilometers on the clock now it has actually 380,000 kilometers on the clock and the reason why I chose this one because it's widely available in Europe parts are also available anywhere in the world it's a very well-known type of vehicle if you go to Asia as well as in Europe and in North America of course Toyota is all around the world but so I needed the daily driver at the time when I purchased it but I had this thought in mind that I want to travel the world and I wanted to choose a vehicle that can be a daily driver as well as uh, capable of, of going to remote places and and is a really good off-roader you're not going to climb rocks with these, it's not going to do the Rubicon Trail or, uh, you know, it's not like the 100 series, 200 series or the 105 or the 70 series. It's a much lighter built vehicle, but it can go to 98% of the places where, uh, where those other vehicles go. Having said that, that's the stock version and this is upgraded a little bit. I'm going to go into the details very soon. Um, but when I chose it I thought it was the right size it's not too big it's not too small uh, it can do these trips I had some experience before uh, in in terms of overlanding traveling far with a vehicle uh, road trips a bit of off-roading as well so I knew what I was actually looking for and I considered other types as well but uh, I thought if I chose another one and of course I could have gone for a better version of the Land Cruiser like of course the 100 series or the 105 or the 200 series the 70 series of Troopy the you know the Troop Carrier 70 series was my dream vehicle but I cannot possibly drive that every day in the middle of the city where I used to live and where I still live uh, so I needed something that makes more sense in a city as well so uh, I wanted to tick all the boxes and this is what um, actually fit everything fit all our needs but after when we've we've done a few trips we completed the a Scandinavian round trip we went up north in Finland and we came down in uh, Sweden I know Finland is not Scandinavia but I'm just you know just so that you have a an idea um, once we've done these longer trips initially we realized if we want to go to Africa which we did or if we want to do the Silk Road which we did uh, through, you know, through Mongolia, through the Caucasus, high mountains, deserts, muddy places, a bit more difficult areas. So you don't have the convenience of being always close to somebody to rescue you. I knew I needed some upgrades to be able to do these longer trips in some remote areas. So what I did, I was looking for a company that had experience in uh, building these type of vehicles, upgrading them, you know, 
beefing up the suspension, adding some expedition uh, equipment to the, to the vehicle. And I found this brilliant company based in Austria called Offroad Hash. Uh, their main focus is building Land Rovers, but when I emailed them, they responded very positively that they want to actually complete this job as well. And I couldn't have been more happy with the result. So what I wanted is actually not to touch the engine and the electronics and the drivetrain. So there were no modifications done on the vehicle that could have affected the reliability, which meant I didn't want to touch the engine. So it's not chipped. It's not tuned in any way. It's totally uh, stock. I didn't want to touch the transmission and it's an automatic transmission. And I will get to that later. I think if I if I was to choose now, I would go for a manual, of course. It had, um, I was considering like, you know, you can burn the clutch in desert, in the sand or in other areas. I knew I couldn't burn the clutch for the uh, automatic transmission, of course, but still with the drawbacks of not being able to pull it in or push it in, or, you know, stopping at a, uh, a downhill to be able to roll it in and then put it in the gear and start the engine like that. With an automatic transmission you cannot do that and that's a big downside of an automatic and i knew that and i was weighing up the the pros and cons and i still went for an automatic also considering that i'm driving this every day in the city still with experience in hindsight i think i would go for a manual 100 percent anyway so the transmission and the engine wasn't touched wasn't modified at all and also the electronics the electronics weren't touched at all so i didn't have it already has two batteries to start the engine but the leisure battery or anything like that wasn't directly connected and and modified in any way like i mean i had a leisure battery but i was using an rpec 720 or 730 which is like basically a box a device that controls how the leisure battery is um is charged by the truck but it's actually just plugged into the 12 volt uh socket so there's no modifications needed. Uh, I'm, of course, including some pictures and there will be links below to all the gear that I'm talking about right now. It will be in the description section below. And if you have any questions, uh, just comment down below and I'll try to get back to you. So none of these main parts of the vehicle were modified. However, what I wanted, I wanted a stronger suspension and originally it had an air suspension and I didn't want to end up in a situation where the air suspension stops working, the, the car sits down on the suspension and the car basically stops or the truck stops to, totally. You cannot do anything once that happens. Once If, if one of these air um, suspension uh, tanks bursts, there's nothing you can do in the bush other than replacing it, which I cannot do. And I assume it would be very hard to fix it in the desert or somewhere, even if you had the parts by, by even a mechanic. So I didn't want that kind of reliability, which meant I wanted to replace it with coil springs, which is what off-road hash in Austria have done. So I've got TJM shocks and springs. And what I also wanted is a snorkel. This is a Bravo snorkel. It's made in Spain. It works totally fine. I'm really happy I've got it done because we went through some very, very dusty sections in the Sahara Desert and also in the savanna where the air filter got so dirty already, even with having the the snorkel that I don't know what would have happened to the air filter. I think it would have probably got totally clogged if we just had the normal air intake at the wheel arches. So I definitely wanted a snorkel. I wanted protection underneath. So I wanted bash plates, the S-Sphere aluminum bash plates or skid plates, whatever you call it, because they are aluminum. However, they are really, really strong. I requested a protection for the engine and the transmission and the transfer case. What I didn't go for and I should have gone is also protection for the fuel tank. The fuel tank, by the way, is also not modified. We had jerry cans that we, we took with us. So the fuel system there for the, the fuel tank wasn't modified either. Uh, or there was no extra fuel tank added either. But later I got in touch with S-Sphere and basically I, uh, I received uh, fuel tank protection from them which I then installed and I'm including a link to that installation video as well down below I also wanted better tires all terrain because I knew that Even though we were looking for proper off-road sections and we were going off-road a lot of times and in proper difficult uh, places however a big part of our itinerary went through normal roads as well as dirt tracks where my terrain tire is not required at all so I would have thought uh, on normal roads, they are just loud 
and fuel consumption is a lot uh, higher and when you consider uh, like a 33,000 kilometers long trip which our Budapest to Singapore trip was it does actually matter if you if your fuel consumption is a little bit higher but also the noise and everything else so I went for the BFG all-terrain KO2s and I couldn't be happier with those because we've done 80,000 kilometers without a single flat tire uh, they are fantastic. Uh, some people complain that they actually lose grip on wet tarmac. I didn't personally experience that. Uh, I think they are totally fine. And they are due to be replaced, but they still have an amazing amount of thread left um, from what I could tell after, after 80, more than 80,000 kilometers. So tires, snorkel, skid plates, no modifications to the engine and the uh, transmission and no modification to the fuel system or the electronics. However, we got rid of the air suspension. Other than that, we've got some gear that made it more expedition ready, such as the front runner roof rack, which is the modular roof rack. Uh, it's very, very easy to then bolt on other gear to the roof rack because it's made in a way that you, can, you have these rails and you have these places to bolt stuff onto. It's really, really cool. Although I have to say it broke, uh, we had a box on the back that had spare parts and oil that I didn't want to keep inside. And I think it was a combination of really bad roads over 20,000 kilometers, um, off-road corrugation, um, you know, bumping up and down. Uh, and this box was just shaking on the, on the roof rack. And, and I had a way of fixing it to the roof rack in a way that it was actually pulling one single bar that got loose and the welding broke. It was an easy fix, but it still broke. And they all break, to be fair, but I wasn't expecting it with this one. Anyway, uh, I'm still happy with it. I, I'm, I'd still recommend that it's a good product. It's aluminum again, so it's very, very light compared to the size. And it's very robust at the same time, even though it broke. And what a fantastic piece of equipment we got on the top of uh, the roof rack is the laser LED lights. They have an incredible amount of power and the, the actual lights of the truck are fine on normal roads. And you know, when you have some reference on the side of the road or in the middle of the road, but once you are off road and in a wide open area, like in Mongolia, and you try to nav navigate in the dark, those are just, I cannot really emphasize how important they are, those kind of lights, so that you have the perspective and you know where the track leads in the distance. Otherwise, you're just going to lose it. Like, um, if it's just a plain area with a couple of tracks going, you do need to see in the distance. And there were some sections we wouldn't have been able to complete without those lights. Um, we have an awning, which is the short version, I think it's the 140 from Frontrunner as well. That's also very, very useful um, either in the rain or obviously if it's too hot and you stop for a quick lunch or you, you, have, you have your camp set up, um, incredibly useful and it's really, really quick to set it up. What we also had, we had a roof tent on the top. We were experimenting since then whether we use ground tent or we go back to a roof tent. It was made by Euro 4x4 Parts, which is a European off-road parts distributor. And they have some products that are branded and they sell it under their own brand name. And it was totally fine. It was really, really good product as well. And if I want to make a quick reference between just comparing rooftop tents or ground tents, I'm, I'm a rooftop tent person. Uh, I think they are much much better than ground tents you don't need to look for dry places or or you can even stop next to the river or in the river if you want um, and still set up your rooftop tent you cannot do it with a ground tent anyway i digress and for the interior we had a, a drawer system built that also served as a platform to sleep in and we had to keep one of the seats in the back so one of the rear seats were, were kept because we had to use a guide in China. To, in order to go through China, you have to have a guide who sits with you all the time. So we had to keep one of the seats. And it was two of us who traveled, plus the guide through China. So that meant the platform couldn't be a rectangular shape. It was an L shape with a flap that folded over so that when we slept inside, we actually had the proper whole back of the truck. Even though it was high because of the fridge, it had a minimum height that we had to build to and 
so it was very cramped inside but we used it for the places where we couldn't open the rooftop tent so maybe next to the villages or the weather was too bad or we thought okay the area is maybe a bit sketchy and uh, we don't feel totally safe and to be fair anytime we slept inside other than the weather if it was for safety reason it was always unjustified it was totally safe everywhere we went at least we didn't get into any any trouble and uh, i will show you in a second how we built it and we'll also as you can see i include some footage from our trips how we used the platform how we set it up everything from the top of that platform had to go to the front uh, when we slept inside and it wasn't comfortable it was actually short for me and it was narrow for the both of us but it served the purpose and it went through stages so we built first we built a version with one drawer then we added the second drawer for the for the longer trip so in Africa we had one drawer plus the fridge slide and uh, obviously the fridge was covered so we could put stuff on the top of it however the second drawer was very very useful because we just we were more organized on, a, on our trip to Southeast Asia. Now let me do a bit of a walk around to show you these modifications that I was talking about. Okay, let's talk about the suspension. As I mentioned, the original springs got replaced by TJM made springs and shock absorbers and bo both on the front and in the back. And the truck ended up having a two or three inch lift, which is about five centimeters. Um, in the back, the air suspension got replaced by springs and new shock absorbers as well. Because originally had an air suspension, the plate that's holding the spring, the coil springs, had to be built. And the electronics of the air suspension had to be disconnected. And you can see the connection right there. This is the original electronic connection for the air suspension. You could actually set three different levels for the ride height and depended on uh, whether you had any load in the back. But I think for an off-road trip like this or a long overland trip, coil springs and beefed up shock absorbers just work a lot better. This is the laser LED lights with an incredible amount of power that I mentioned. And we had the front runner aluminum expedition roof rack with a bottle opener. That's actually a bottle opener. Very, very useful. And this is where it broke. So we just fixed it with three bolts. Uh, it used to be welded back in, but the welding just always got loose always broke again and again but the three bolts seem to work just fine also in the back we used to have a ladder on the right side just a rudimentary really basic metal ladder on the right and we also had a jerry can holder built onto it in africa we had a couple of jerry cans on the roof rack also made by front runner but for the longer trip, we didn't want to carry the jerry cans on the, on the roof rack. We just wanted, there was no space either, but we just, we just wanted to carry it a bit lower because it's, it's a bit of a weight. As I mentioned, we had protection bash plates made by Esphere and we had a pretty big hit in Mongolia. One of the rocks basically stopped the truck and this is all it happened. So it bent, it got bent and we could actually take it down and uh, and bend it back and I just didn't do it. I haven't done it yet. Uh, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but it's going all the way through to the fuel tank now. So we've got it under the engine and the transfer case and the transmission. And all the way back there, there is the fuel tank protector. The side steps are also removed for better ground clearance as you can see the truck is not equipped with a winch and I deliberately made that decision not to carry that weight for a trip like that there was one occasion where I think it would have been useful otherwise for at least what we've done 
during that trip even though as i said we were looking for adventurous trails and uh, you know we didn't just choose the highways i didn't think it was necessary for our trip having said that with our new vehicle i did want a winch and now we have a pretty powerful worn winch on our new eveco truck i will do a review video about that as well and once that's ready it will also be linked down below in the description so maybe you can check the description now it could possibly be there already let's look at the interior it's fairly standard not much has been modified here just a few bits and pieces so that we have more places to put our stuff basically so you cannot have enough of these kind of organizers this is from a company called camp cover it goes over the low range gearbox stick and it's really useful you just put your cb radios different things passports whatever your little things and we also have a dash cover this is very common in hot countries especially in asia and australia where you can see it in every single vehicle what it does is well first of all if you're taking photos from inside the dashboard which is actually a, a light colored dashboard is not reflected in the window as much but mainly the main reason obviously that was important for us but the main reason why people use this is because in hot countries it can actually reduce the the temperature inside at least it's not gonna heat up that that much and also it protects your dashboard of course in the back the two rear seats on the left were taken out and the, the rear right seat was kept and we used to have the sleeping platform coming all the way up to the front seats again another organizer here you can put your water bottles in here your extra jumper in there uh, many many things very useful this is a bottle holder again so useful you can just uh, stick a bottle in here and you don't need to look for it it's not going to be in your way we have a window breaker emergency seat belt cutter just in case of an accident you need to leave the vehicle very quickly and uh, it's uh, i think it's a must in every car in every vehicle talking of safety we also had a couple of fire extinguishers on the side so there would be there would have been one here and then one on the other side also another really cool organizer is one of these mesh things whatever they are you can just shove your coats or again jumpers caps whatever you want it keeps things out of the way and keeps things organized so this is the awning from front runner and as you can see it's not the long version it's a short version and it was totally enough for us i didn't want to carry that kind of weight again so if you're going on long trips like that that takes months or years um, you really really need to think about the weight and uh, if you just shed a few kilograms here and there you're gonna end up with a lot of safe weight anyway so that's the awning and we had a couple of lights camp lights I just used them to either find proper spots to, to 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 level the vehicle if it was dark or once we were stationary it was really good to just brighten up the the surroundings of the of the truck so just to set up camp and stuff they're really bright now let's check the back before I talk about the drawer system I just want to show you this very very basic table that I made with my dad and um, it's just hung up with these bungee cords and it's an old sheet of wood and it's incredibly useful you just stop have a quick lunch have a quick coffee I can really really recommend this for you to build because it's very easy and incredibly useful now the drawer system because this is the Prado 120 so the chassis and the body of the car would be the same as the Lexus GX470 so I will include the measurements the dimensions of of this drawer system down below in the description and if you want to build it for your own Prado or for the GX470 you can just use the measurements and uh, and build your own one this is made of plywood this is 12 millimeter here and the vertical one as well however for the drawers and by the way I just ordered the parts I just ordered the drawer slides from from the internet from Amazon and uh, also these latches and 
the drawers and wherever I could save some weight, they are the eight millimeter plywood. So 12 millimeter where I needed some rigidity places where it needed to take some weight, they are 12 millimeter. However, in other places, they are just the eight millimeter. The top drawer was our kitchen. We still keep our gas stove in it. And up until about a couple of months ago, we had every camping equipment still in the truck. And the bottom drawer was all our camping gear, tables, chairs, you name it. On the left side, we built a fridge slide for our 40 liter angle fridge. And so that's just your standard angle 12 volt fridge. Really, really happy with this one. Fantastically reliable. It's a really nice piece of kit. And the fridge slide, as you can see, comes out all the way like that. With the fridge slide, we wanted some support below the actual fridge. So I don't know if you can see it, but there are some rollers. Yeah, I think you can see it now that basically hold it as well as you have the slides so that on bumpy roads, the slides don't actually take the weight, but the rollers do. So we didn't have any issues with this. It was, uh, I would say it was a very well thought out build uh, when, it, when we finished it. In the meantime, we made a few mistakes when we were building it, but the end result was pretty good. Of course, now that we are using it as a daily driver, we cut off the platform and just use the short version. And we also have some cargo rail on the sides and on the back as well. And as you can see, we covered it with felt. Um, so I'm quite happy with this as well, especially it's a DIY project with my dad. And it was a pretty good few days when we built it. Uh, and it was actually a couple of times because we upgraded the first version. On the sides, I kept various things, uh, recovery equipment. We had a snatch strap and various other things like a jumper cable as well. We had a shovel that was mounted to the side of the roof rack. But otherwise, our recovery gear was a bit basic, I would think. What I should have had and we didn't was a high lift jack, especially with a lift mate because that would have saved us many times. That would have saved hours. Once in Mongolia, when we got stuck, I was um, digging for like four hours during the night. We just had to get somewhere to fix our starter motor, which was an issue because of the automatic transmission. This is a whole other story, but a high lift jack is the recovery gear that I wouldn't leave at home anymore. And with our new vehicle, the 4x4 Iveco truck that we're using now for our trips, we actually have one. So um, that was probably the single most important gear that I didn't take with me. But I learned my lesson and, uh, and now we've got one. Overall, I'm quite happy with the vehicle, the, the fact that we chose this for our long trips so far. Now we are using a totally different vehicle, a 4x4 van, an Iveco da Turbo Daily uh, 4x4. And uh, even though that, that's because we have other goals now, we want to spend even more time on the road now. And for that, we need internal space. We need, you know, heating inside, which we didn't have in this one, by the way. We want to be able to travel through bad weather comfortably. And we want to be able to stop and just camp a lot easier than with a rooftop tent. And that Iveco 4x4 truck, I would call it a mini expedition truck. That's what I'm trying to build it into, to be a small expedition truck. You can call it a 4x4 van, which is in fact what it is, but it can be a lot more with the right equipment. But I digress now. I don't think I will ever sell this vehicle. And the reason is because I'm extremely happy with it. It's done what we wanted it to do. It took us to the other side of the world. It took us through three different continents or at least part of it. And even though we had problems with it, a lot of those occasions were my own fault or from the fact that 
we used it in extreme conditions and eventually some of the parts gave up or uh, some of the parts were not used in a way that they were designed to. Either way, if you're considering to buy one of these or a similar version of these, so as I mentioned, the GX470 or, an, or, a, or the same kind of Prado with a different engine, I can highly recommend it. The three liter diesel for us worked really, really well. Go for the manual transmission, not the automatic, but if you already have the automatic, doesn't matter, go for it. Have an extra starter motor with you and perhaps go to mechanic and learn how to fix it yourself or how to replace it yourself in the bush. I think it's a perfect vehicle if you want an overlanding truck as well as a daily driver at the same time and you don't want two separate vehicles if you're looking for that kind of lifestyle. Thank you for watching. Please ask in the comments if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. If I missed anything, if you, if you want to know any kind of specific information about any parts of this truck and um, thank you for watching and please like and subscribe as usual thank you